So students, in this module, we'll look at the nuclear fuel as a source of energy, the advantages of using the nuclear energy and limitations of using nuclear energy. Firstly, let us begin by understanding what is nuclear energy. Energy harnessed from the nucleus of an atom is called nuclear energy. So let's see how this is harnessed. This can be harnessed in two ways. The first one is nuclear fission and the second one is nuclear fusion. Now what is nuclear fission? Splitting up of heavy nucleus into lighter one is called nuclear fission. And what is fusion? Nuclear fusion is the combination of two lighter nuclei to form heavy nucleus. So in short students, fission is splitting and fusion is combination. Now let's discuss nuclear fission. When we discuss nuclear fission, here we have this nuclear reactor. Now what is a nuclear reactor? Nuclear power reactor is extensively used for power generation as traditional fossil fuels like coal are at extinction. The nuclear reactor is a source of intense heat which is in turn used for generation of power. Now there are three main components. So let us see which are the three important components of a nuclear reactor. The first component is a fuel element. The second component is moderator and the third component is control rods. So let us learn each of them in detail. Firstly, to begin with fuel elements. Now the main fuel element which a nuclear generator has is fissionable uranium-235 or plutonium-239 can also be used as a fuel element. Now for the students, thermal neutron are capable of producing fission reaction with uranium-235. Let's understand how this happens. Here we have this uranium-235. When uranium-235 is bombarded by slow moving neutrons, that is thermal neutrons, they collide with uranium-235 and uranium-235 splits into barium and krypton with the ejection of three neutrons. Now the mass of barium, the three neutrons and krypton is slightly less than uranium-235. And this mass gets converted into heat. So difference in mass number of the lighter nuclei with respect to the heavy nucleus leads to the liberation of heat energy. Now this process doesn't end here, it'll continue because these three neutrons will go further and hit three separate uranium-235 and from this there will be ejection of nine neutrons. So here you can see this nine neutrons have come out. This nine neutrons will further go and hit nine uranium-235 and in a very short time a huge amount of heat energy is generated. And as a very huge amount of heat energy is generated, this you can see is the example of uncontrolled chain reaction. So if this reaction is not controlled in a very short span of time, a huge amount of energy is generated and it can be used for a destructive purpose that is atom bomb. Now for the students, let us come to the second part and understand what does a moderator do. Now the moderator plays the role of moderating this particular reaction. So moderator has a capability to moderate or slow down this high energy neutrons. Deuterium, which is nothing but a heavier hydrogen, has the power to slow down the neutron speed because the deuterium is very heavy. So when a slow moving neutron goes and hits the deuterium, its kinetic energy will decrease. Now for the students, here, these are the control rods. Now what is the function of the control rods? The main purpose of control rod is to absorb excess neutrons. Now to increase the rate of nuclear fission, sometimes what is done is, these rods can be removed from the moderator. So if you remove, the fission reaction will expand faster. Now this is how it works. So these neutrons are made incident on the control rods, that is cadmium. So when they are incident on cadmium, excess of these neutrons are absorbed and only a limited number of neutrons are left to carry forward the fission process. So this is how it happens. So this, when it is controlled, is called controlled chain reaction. Now for the students, let us say in this particular section, heat is produced. So the heat energy released in this process is absorbed by the coolant which then passes through the coils of a heat exchanger containing water. So this will go to the coolant and from the coolant it goes into the heat exchanger. Now when it goes into the heat exchanger, there's water. So the water in the heat exchanger gets heated and gets converted into steam. Now we all know steam has a very high pressure. So this particular steam moves through these narrow pipes and after moving through this particular narrow pipes, the steam is used to rotate the turbine. So when the turbine rotates, the turbines is connected to the generator. 
So in the generator, the turbine makes the armature coil to rotate in the magnetic field and when the armature coil rotates in the magnetic field, current is induced and we have induced EMF. So students, in this manner, electricity is produced in a nuclear reactor and this was the basic working of a nuclear reactor. Further students, let us understand the advantages of using the nuclear energy. The first advantage, a very small amount of nuclear fuel such as uranium-235 can produce a tremendous amount of energy. The second advantage, only the nuclear fuel is loaded into a nuclear power plant. It continues to release energy over a long period. So once the nuclear fuel is loaded, the energy it emanates is for a very long period. Now let us see what are the limitations. Why don't we use this on a very large scale? The first limitation, it is not a clean source of energy because very harmful nuclear radiations are produced in the process which are highly energetic and penetrating. Now the second limitation is the waste obtained from the nuclear power plant causes a high degree of environmental pollution. So this students was the advantages and limitations of using nuclear energy. Thank you.